stage, Mr. Matt Smith. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. How are we all? It's very nice to see you. Am I up here on my own? Is it just me? Is there no one up here with me? Oh, Lord. Welcome, Mr. Smith. Hi, how are you? Dr. Philip Targaryen, if you please. <laughs> yes. Uh, have you been to Belgium? Is, is this your first time in Belgium? Have you been here before? No, I've been before. I, I've been to Bruges before, which is very nice. Um, Woohoo. Um, <laughs> I've been to Brussels once before, and I've been to Ypres once before to go and see the Men of Gate. Is that pronounced right? Ypres? Ypres. Ypres. Well, Ypres. Ypres in the local dialect, but that's. <laughs> Yeah, it's wonderful. It's um, yeah, it's a fabulous country. It's you beautiful. were in the movie in Bruges, but that was not filmed in Bruges. Yeah, well, I was in the movie in Bruges, but then they cut me out of the movie in Bruges. So technically, I've never been in Bruges in Bruges. I, they probably regret this now, don't they? <laughs> no, I don't think they do. Yes, I do think but so. I love that film, though. It's great. Okay, let's see. Who has a question for Matt Smith? You pro you have to ask questions. Otherwise, I will do it, and it will be nerdy Doctor Who stuff, 45 minutes straight. So please help me out here. <laughs> First question over there with the pink microphone. Hello. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. It's funny this little square box microphone. Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, I have a question about uh, House of the Dragon. Yeah. And what's um, the transition between actress for Rhaenyra and how it didn't impact your acting in any way with chemistry, relation? Like, well, well the actress looks amazing, oh, amazing, but. Yeah, that's well, a very good question. Um, yeah, I really loved having two actors play the same part because it, it, it did a lot of the work for you somehow because their energies are sort of intrinsically quite different as people. Um, and I think Millie captured this, this, this sort of fabulous, youthful spirit of Rhaenyra um, and it's just amazing. And then Emma, who's coming in, um, they're just the most fabulous actor really, and I'm, I'm so excited to see what they're going to do. Um, well, I know, I, I, I know what they've done, actually, um, because I was there. Um, so I think, yeah, it's, um, it's sort of, because their energies were slightly different, it, it, was, uh, it was creatively quite rewarding for me. It was good. I'm excited about it. And also, like, I've done, like, people worry about that. They worry about the part changing and all that. But because I did Doctor Who, I guess, and you guys were Doctor Who fans, we're used to it, aren't we? It happens. Change is a good thing, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you okay, very thank much. You. I've never watched Doctor Who, sorry. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's plenty of people who can give an introduction yeah. courses. No, no worries. We'll find you after. I'm sorry. Where's the green microphone? The green microphone, where is it? At this moment, please stand up if you have the green microphone. Here it is, or is it blue? Well, uh, the other color, the not pink one. Ah, yes, yes the green box. Your question. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Hi. Uh, if the doctor traveled to Westeros and met Damon, how would they react to each other? <laughs> That's a very good question. I think the doctor would whip Damon into shame, to be honest. <laughs> Um, I think he'd eat him for breakfast, really. I think he'd, you know, he'd be like, look, mate, just calm down. Stop being so cross about everything. Come in the TARDIS, I'll take you on an adventure, and we'll have a great time, and I'll show you something else. And I think, yeah, I think, I think the Doctor would be quite a good influence on Damon. I think he'd, I don't know, I, yeah, he'd just be a good, calming, brilliant Doctory influence, I think. And I think, I think Damon would quite like the Doctor. Okay. Thank you, and have a great visit to Brussels. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> the pink microphone, where did it go? Pink microphone, please stand up. Oh, yes. To the right. Um, hello, I hope you're having a great time here. I am. Uh, my question is, what are your thoughts about the uncle-niece relationship between Renera <laughs> and Damon? Well, my question is, what are your thoughts about the relationship between Damon and Renera? Please, you tell me. I mean, look. It's pretty weird. Um, <laughs> but that's what happens in Westeros. That's what happens with the Targaryen clan. They are pretty weird, and Daemon is... Daemon. <laughs> so, um, you know, he's, he's got a sort of intrinsic, strange... It's like they've got an umbilical cord that's attached between them in some strange way. I mean, what do you think? Weirds you out? Um, at first, it was a bit 
was weird, but maybe now <laughs> <laughs> we will see okay. it in a few episodes. Interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Interesting. Well, we, we've seen weirder things in uh, Game of Thrones, of course. Yeah, but, uh, well, exactly. <laughs> That, that was the result of the strange relationships 300 years later. Or well, so. yeah, yeah. Really weird stuff comes out. The blue microphone, or the green one, I don't know the color. Please stand up if you have the blue or green microphone. Oh, it's still traveling up there. There it goes. Where are we? Blue box, spinning around, bigger on the inside. Let's move to the pink microphone. Where is the pink microphone? Pink microphone over there. Ah, right down the front. Since I'm just in front of you, but anyway. You look very smart, by the way. Very smart? Very smart, yeah. Thank you very much, you too. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so my question as a young actor is what is the best advice you could give to me? As a young actor? Yes. Well, firstly, you're doing a good job because you look brilliant, so that's something. Um, I think, look, I think it's a tough one. You've got to read as much as you can, make as much as you can. Try and be involved at any level. It doesn't really matter what level it is. Don't worry if it's a school play or a play at work that someone's putting on or something in your local community. Just get involved and get out there and practice and sharpen your tools and work at your craft on a daily basis like you would if you were an athlete. And, that, and so therefore it means it's about consuming as much material as possible, plays and different forms and nowadays you can make so much you can make something on your iphone you can you know uh, you, it's easy to get content out into the world and oh. then just never give up never give up definitely i mean I, i've already made my thing on social networks but i mean i want to be on a script someday so well yeah i, I look forward to seeing you there yeah. <laughs> what's your name i'm jonathan jonathan what's yours man <laughs> Have a great stay in Belgium, man. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And we have the blue box over there, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I can't believe this. I can't, um, hang on, it's like a voice from the gods. Where are you? Oh, there you are. I'm here, here, yeah. here. Voice right. from the gods, yes. Um, I, yeah. I just wanted to ask you, um, how does it feel to be in, in this this show? Like, how does it feel to, to be in, in the world of Westeros? Like, what is that? What does that do to you? Well, well, um, well look, I, I feel very proud to be, to be part of this world and, and to be part of the legacy that all of the other actors in Game of Thrones started um, and that George has created. Uh, I think it's a very interesting world. I think it's a very brutal world. I think it's good for my imagination, you know. I'm entertained, but the truth is it's a really tough show to make. And it, um, it's grueling and it's a long shoot. We shot for like 13 months. So it was tough, but yeah, it feels good, man. It feels... Yeah. All right, cool. Could be I, worse. I cannot believe I'm here. Um, thanks. My pleasure, man. Have a good day. You, yeah, definitely, you, you definitely are here. We can all confirm. So that is... So that, I was wondering, we've seen a few making offs of uh, Game of Thrones. A yeah. lot of green key and things around. How is it on set? Do you, are you really in this fantasy world or is it just when it's finished? Yeah, I mean like the Red Keep is like, it's like a whole world. They've built a whole, it's like a huge castle really and there's like bedrooms in it and top floors. It's like three studios, it's enormous. Great. And then um, a lot of the sets are practical, really. Yeah. And then we go to Spain and Portugal and stuff, and there's some green stuff. Obviously the dragons are green. But even that, they build like a huge big plinth, and it's like 20 foot in the air. And you're on this, what is like a bucking bronco, essentially. And there's a guy with a remote control who like moves you around. You're like, That's a cool job, being the remote control of a dragon. It is. I would want that. Yeah, so. I know, I'd want that a bit. Pink microphone. Where is the big microphone? Oh, my the ah, at the front. Sabrina. Yeah. There you are. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Um, my question is, if you could take the TARDIS and go back in time, what advice would you give to your 10-year-old self? <laughs> what advice would I give to my 10-year-old self? Blimey. Um, look, oh God, don't sweat the small stuff. Um, 
advice would I give to my... I mean, actually, let me ask you that question, because it's such a good question. What advice would you give to your 10-year-old self? I have no idea. It's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks for asking it. Does, does anyone know the answer? I'm struggling with that quite a bit. What would you? Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself, yeah. Be your guest. Be your guest. But I, I love that film. Be the guest. Um, yeah, don't sweat the small stuff. Work really hard. Never give up. I don't know. Enjoy it. We're only here once, aren't we? And um, yeah, watch Doctor Who. Also, Matt, it is my cousin's birthday today and she loves you and I was wondering if you could say happy birthday to her. Her name's Isha. Isha, happy birthday, old free. Enjoy it. Have a good year. Thanks so much, we love you. Pleasure, treasure. Thank you. Back to the blue microphone. Where can you find it? There it is. There we are. Uh, hi. Hi. Um, if you could play with any actor that you haven't played with yet, who would it be? Ooh. It's a very good question. Um, who would I like to do something with? I think Paul Dano. Do you know Paul Dano? I really like him. I think he's great. Um, God, I always, it's like, you know when people go, what's your favourite album? And then I get home two hours later and I go, that's my favourite album. I always forget. Um, who would I like to work with? Daniel Day-Lewis, but he's not acting at the moment, so he's a goner. Um, Jack Nicholson's my favourite actor, so probably if I could, you know, I'd, I'd pick him. Also, uh, did you watch Game of Thrones? Yeah. Um, uh, if you could change who, like, um, uh, one, like, at the end, who was, like, the king or the queen, who, who would you have decided? Who would you, who would I make king or queen? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> probably the hound. <laughs> I'd make the hound king. Yeah, he was cool. I liked him. Okay, thank you. Anna. Thank you. Pink microphone on the right side over there, the far right side. Yes. Ah, hello. 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 Um, I'm conflicted with two questions, so I'm going to let you decide which one I'm going to ask. Fabulous. The one is weird, but still normal. The other okay. one is weird, but really unique. I will let you decide. Okay. I, would, I mean, I, well, I, I need to pick first yeah, before I've heard the weird them. one, but normal, or the weird one, but unique? Uh, let's go weird and unique. Weird and unique. Your funeral. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is something I ask a few of my friends, and we were debating it a lot. In an episode with Peter Capaldi, you see the master, and this is Michelle Gomez, and I've got the other one's name. My yeah. Apologies. Sasha. Really Sasha Darwin. So, really getting flurry with each other, dancing and things. And I was wondering now, if a time lord or a time lady starts a relationship with himself or herself of a different regeneration, will it be incest or self-pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> time lord and a time lady. That same generation, but different. Um, what you mean, so essentially if doctors met one another and started a relationship, like when you met uh, David. David, if I met David and, like and kissed the, 11th, the tenth doctor or yeah. the ninth doctor. No, I just think, well, I think anything goes if you're the doctor, doesn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sure there's some sort of timey-wimey way around it. Yeah, I got to have David Dan question, he crash landed. Really? <laughs> Well, there you go. Um, yeah, no, I think, why not? Each their own. Who cares if you... It's like kissing yourself, essentially, isn't it? So, it's not that bad, I think. <laughs> Let's just not bring any incest anywhere near the time lords. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's go back to the blue microphone. Where can I see it? Over here. Blue microphone, yes, please. No. Where are we? Uh, here, first of here on the left side, left side. Ah, yes. Ah, there you are. Uh, first of all, welcome to Belgium. Thank you very much. We're very proud to have you here. Well, I'm very pleased to be here. Um, I was wondering, I think, uh, just like uh, a lot of people here, um, the scene at the end uh, of uh, episode 3 from uh, House of the Dragon, mm. where you don't uh, actually say anything, 
did it start out uh, like that, or um, did you have any lines? Uh, um, yeah, there were lines in it. I mean, that scene went through a lot of different iterations. And there was a version of it that I really wanted, anyway, it to be, um, which it didn't turn out being in the end. Um, but I think, I can't remember if there are any lines after, um, after I get off the dragon. I don't think there were, really. I don't think I said very much. Or did I? I might have. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, it's really unhelpful, isn't it? I have no idea. But, um, yeah, it ended up as it did. No, I, yeah, I it looked, looked because, right I, then. because I think, um, and a lot of people think, it's one of the best scenes. Really? Uh, in recent years. Uh, oh, well, cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. That's so, nice. so That's it nice. was uh, to me. So, uh, really? Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. One of yeah. the best scenes of recent years. Yeah, yeah. I'll take that. Yes. Yeah, sure. Put it on your Instagram. Yes. <laughs> Watch Doctor Who. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Pink microphone. Where is the pink microphone? Oh, Hello. Over there. Hi. Um, first of all, thank you because you made me love Doctor Who. And. <laughs> Second, um, I want to ask you, which one did you prefer between Rory and Amy? And why? <laughs> <laughs> you meanie. I love them both equally more than each other. So, you know, um, but Amy. <laughs> but I love Rory. You can't not love Rory, but Rory just dies all the time. So it's like, where is he? Oh, he's dead. Oh, he's back. Okay, great. Whereas Amy, I think Amy and the Doctor have a very special bond because they met when they were so young. And I think, I still think that's one of the best ways to meet a companion. What Stephen did with that storyline, I thought was really clever. Who's your favourite companion? Um, it, Amy. It doesn't, who? Amy. Amy. Amy yeah. Pond. Nice. And yeah, I saw Karen last week. Cool dude. Can I ask another question? No. <laughs> no, yeah, go on. It's that demon Targaryen voice. You can get anything <laughs> done from everyone now. Yes. Okay, where is the uh, uh, blue microphone? Over there, yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Um, I wanted to know, um, so you have your, your first temper, and so I wanted to know if you have more the temper of demon Targaryen or the temper of the doctor. It's probably, well, I'm not as cool as the Doctor. I think I love the Doctor, do you know what I mean? So I can't claim to be quite like the Doctor. I quite like Damon, to be honest. He's a bit weird, but I quite like him. I don't know, I think in truth, you're, I'm not even, I'm not that close to, re I'm probably closer to the Doctor okay. as a human than I am, even though he's an alien. <laughs> yeah, I think, probably. Damon's really moody. Okay. Thank you, and I have another question, if I can. No. Oh, okay, Demon. <laughs> um, yeah. So I wanted to know what is your best memory on the set of the Doctor because I'm a fan. Oh, my best memory. Do you know what was fun in the second episode, the beach, the, the beast below that we did, okay. which we filmed really early. They built this like we come out of a whale's tongue in it. Obviously, I'm ruining it for the person that's never watched Doctor Who. <laughs> but we we come out of a whale's tongue and we land in all this like cabbage and muck basically and they built this huge slide and me and Kaz just got to sort of slide down it it was right off that was good yeah that was a good day of work I'll pick I'll pick that today okay. rather than riding a dragon yeah <laughs> <laughs> next question we have the pink microphone on the right side somewhere can I see it ah please? yes hello oh there you are yeah doctor can you speak in the in the black circle? That is the microphone. Please speak in there. Yes, ask your question. I love you, Doctor. Uh, but, but, uh, but, yeah, but yes. <laughs> Was that the question? <laughs> Excuse me, we are French and don't speak very well. Oh, but I'm sorry that I don't speak French or Flemish. But it's, you can ask. I'm the Ingram one. Vous pouvez poser votre question en français, j'en suis sûr que quelqu'un peut traduire ici. Je 
voudrais savoir quel rôle vous a le plus marqué dans toute votre carrière. I didn't get it. So, <laughs> somebody who can translate it around you, yes, please give the microphone. Yes. They're asking which role um, was the most important in your, in your career, career, which influenced you the most. Uh, it's a role. Okay. Which which role? Yeah. Well, um, I suppose they're all as important as one another, really, for varying reasons, and it depends what stage you're at in your life. Obviously, playing the doctor was a, a huge privilege and a huge moment in, in my life but similarly you know playing someone like Damon is or, or I had a great time making last night in Soho and you know there's there's been uh, I've been fortunate to do work with lots of people that I've enjoyed but really the great thing is that you get to meet fabulous people over the years um, so yeah that's that's what I really take with me okay thank you uh, when Merci. I'm, I'm just curious, when it comes to fandoms, you, ha you had the Hoovians, I know mm. we're a bunch, I know we're a handful. What uh, do you expect from the Game of Thrones fans? Well, I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? I just hope they enjoy it. I mean, I've had a wonderful time with the Hoovians over the years. I think it's a, a lovely family to be part of, really. I feel very happy. So, hopefully, you know, the guys from Game of Thrones will be... Will be, will be nice too. Will be tried to be, and I just remember who these are the best. Good! Yeah. Next question! Blue microphone, over here, yes. Hello, Doctor. Hello. I have a bit of a weird question. Okay, we like but, weird. <laughs> but in Doctor Who, in your seasons, you've kissed multiple people, Rory, Amy, and Trevor, so. Yeah. And I was wondering which one you liked the most. Oh. <laughs> Which one gets the best? Well, not, well, no, not Rory, because he's dead most of the time, so <laughs> he can go, I will, I'm going to say Alex Kingston. <laughs> River, because she puts the wobblies up the doctor, but he loves her anyway. <laughs> the old wifey. Thank you okay. so much. Yeah, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Pink microphone on the other side, probably there. Hello. A bit higher. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, my question is, uh, did you like the ending that you had in the Doctor, as the Doctor? Um, well, look, um, it's always hard leaving that show because it's such a wonderful part to leave. And part of you, I knew I had to leave really, but you know, part of you goes, oh, I could stay for a bit. And regenerating is, it's, it's, it's a tough, you know, was it the best episode it could be? I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but... I thought I thought Stephen wrote some few, you know some really great stuff, and it was nice. I had Jenna and, and Karen there as the two companions and stuff. So yeah, look, I was I was proud of the body of work up to that point. Um, yeah, but I think everything can always be better. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Blue microphone, please. Hello. 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 Oh, here you are in the front. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, honey. But they are. Yeah, well, I'm awesome. I'm a Scorpio. I think Damon Targaryen is definitely a Scorpio. Do you think? Yeah. You don't think an Aries? We might be. I don't know. Do you think he's more <laughs> I an Aries? Very chaotic though. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah, but he's got a sort of he can be, he's got a kind of sting in his tail. Yeah, like a Scorpio. And I, I I don't know. I I think the Doctor is all of the, the star signs, and all of the planets rolled into one. Really. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Nice one, honey. Thank you. Pink microphone, there. Hi, Matt. Hello. Greetings from your Ukrainian fans. Ah, greetings back to you, Ukraine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how do you think, who would be the better politician in our world, Damon or Doctor? <laughs> the Doctor. <laughs> well, actually, no, they'd both be terrible, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think, I think as leaders of countries, they, they, they'd both be pretty wayward, I would say. But probably the Doctor, I think Damon would be a tricky old fish. Thank you. Heads would roll. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe we can see Damon lead a country sometime in the you fiction. You never know. Right? You never know. You probably can't tell us or they will have to well, kill Yeah, him. exactly. He's got a big enough dragon. <laughs> okay, blue microphone is right here. Hi. Hello, Doctor. Ask, uh, what was your favorite speech in Doctor Who? Ooh, good question. I, I think purely because of the time I did it, 
it was really, really cold. I can't tell you how cold it was. We were up, it was a night shoot, we were on like a mountain in Wales. And um, there's, a, there's a speech at the end of the first season where there's a, he's talking to a load of spaceships. And Stonehenge. Yeah, yeah, on Stonehenge. And we got to go to Stonehenge as well, and it was really amazing. And, and um, I think there were just a lot of bits in play. But then I thought there was a really beautiful one that Stephen wrote in the Rings of Akatan as well. Do you know the one I mean? I thought that was a great bit of writing. So maybe one of those two, but I was lucky to have Stephen Moffat, who was so fabulous at, at writing those great big Shakespearean soliloquies. It was, yeah. What's your favorite? The microphone is gone, but I will come to you, yes. Yeah, I think that's my favorite as well, as well I think. Really, the yeah. one, and then, and then. Yeah, 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 yeah it's cool though. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, the big microphone. Mr. Oh, Smith, welcome to Belgium. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have a question about a dragon or a doctor, but one of my favorite movies is uh, Last Night in Soho. Yeah. Woo! You're a great actor, but you're even a better dancer. Ah. Because there's one scene where it's amazing, that scene, the dance sequence. Yeah. I saw the making of. It was like, wow, how did they do that? Yeah. So my question to you is, which one is the better dancer, Anya or Tamasin? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are tough, aren't you? <laughs> Um, um, I, well, they're both pretty good, actually. I think I was the weakest. No, I thought you were the best. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I think, I think, I think it comes quite naturally to Anya. Um, not to say that, Tom, that, that kind of Tom's a bad dancer, because she's not, but I think Anya was sort of born to dance. And, and it was, it took like a lot of time to practice that? A lot of time to practice it, yeah. But Great there was such a wonderful filmmaker in yeah. Edgar Wright who manages to sort of be such a wizard and, uh, and make it seem like it was these wonderful shape-shifting moments. I always wanted Edgar to direct an episode of Doctor Who. I think he'd be brilliant at it. Oh, yes, yes. But never happened. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, man, this is Sven de Linder, famous actor in Belgium and the biggest movie geek of the country, I think. Really? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Any, any nerdy movie questions? One person to ask. Really? Oh, Where nice. is the other microphone? The, uh, Blue microphone, there we are, yes, a bit higher up. Uh, hi, Matt. Hi. How are you today? I'm really well, thank you. Yeah, where are you? There you are. Here. Oh, yeah. God, how could I miss you with that lovely hair? Thank you. Uh, so my question was, um, what's, what's, what was the most challenging part of playing um, Diamond Targaryen? The wig. Because <laughs> I'm not very good at being still. And you, it takes like an hour and a half to put on every morning, and I have to put a ball cap on and all this stuff. And I just thought, oh my God, make this hurry up, make this hurry up, make this hurry up. Was, was it like painful or just like? Well, no, they glue it on, and but it's like wearing like oh, a yeah. swimming cap. You know when you go swimming, mm -hmm. and they put like a like a cap on you to get your hair out of the way. And, um, but no, and also physically, it was quite challenging. It was a tough shoot physically. There were a lot of stunts and stuff. And that's always quite, but that's good, you know, it's good fun, it makes the day pass. Yeah. And I had to learn to horse ride, and I make horses a bit jittery. You know, some people are good on them, I'm terrible on them. So, yeah, there were, there were a lot of challenges, but they were good. Yeah. Uh, I have another question. Go for it. No, so, you can't ask it. <laughs> uh, so I, I saw on YouTube that you did a few interviews with uh, Paddy Constein. Yeah. And you two seem to, to get along very well with each other. Yeah. So I was wondering if uh, with some of the cast members you did create friendships or relationships like Emma Darcy or Patty or others? Yeah. Well, outside of work, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm really, really close with a lot of the cast. Uh, Reese Evans is amazing, Fabian Frankel, Emma Darcy, Liv Cook. Like, yeah, we, we, we were really blessed on that to have a wonderful, collaborative, kind, fun group of actors. Lots of whom I'm, I'm sure you'll meet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is, is the, the the wig is it itchy? Yeah. Really. Hot and itchy. Yeah, of course. But look, they look cool the wigs, and they're Targaryens. You've got to have them. But it's and it's, it's a good thing that you can be grumpy all the time. So. Yeah, well, exactly. That's yeah. What, yeah, and it's quite it's quite useful, isn't it? Was David a light-hearted character until they put a wig on? Is that what happened? Well, who knows? I mean, <laughs> I think sometimes he can be quite light-hearted. I like to think he can be. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm curious. That will come in the next episode. Yeah, yeah. Next question. The pink microphone. Where is the pink microphone? Over there. Hi. Um, Hi. 
I'm sorry because my English is bad. It's better than my Flemish or French. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for your role in The Crown, did you meet Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip? Or did you prepare for the role? No, I mean, I didn't get to meet Philip or the Queen, sadly. I wish I had done. I'd have loved to have met Prince Philip. But I did. I've, I, you know, I've met now King Charles. And I met Harry and William briefly, and they were they were very pleasant and um, very polite and nice. Um, I prepared. I did a lot of research on Philip, and there was a sort of people in England used to have a particular opinion of Philip as being of a bit, you know, you need to make social gaffes and this and that. But I found him to be hugely interesting, terribly clever, and funny actually. And uh, I got to learn a lot about England and the royal family from that show that I just had no idea about. Thank you. Thank you. Is it true that, that, that Harry called you granddad when you met him? It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was only joking. But yeah, he did. He was, he was very, very gracious. And the Queen did watch The Crown, I heard? I heard, but whether, it, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I couldn't, it's, you know, it's not, I couldn't confirm it. But I heard, I heard it, you know, someone said she did once upon a time. And Prince Philip did not? He didn't. How did he react? Somebody just, asked him, right? Yeah, someone asked him and he was like, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> he couldn't give a damn. He was, too, he, was too, he, was, he was too cool for school, Philip. Too cool for his own character. Damn right. Wonderful, wonderful. The blue microphone, where is it? Over here, yeah. Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, hello. Uh, my question is also related to uh, the crown. I was wondering if you feel something special when uh, the Duke of Edinburgh or Queen Elizabeth II died because you created like a special bond, like you feel more involved than other English people? Yeah, I did. Thank I mean, you. I wasn't sort of hugely, before I did that job, I wasn't hugely royalist or particularly in, into the royal family. And then I got that job and I got to learn about the family and particularly about him and her. And, um, I, you know, I got to learn about the love and the bond between them and what they'd endured, really, um, whether you believe in them or not as an institution. But, uh, so, yeah, I was sad. I was sad for Britain, really. And I think, you know, I, I wonder what's going to happen to the monarchy now that she's gone. She was such a wonderful figurehead. Um, you, you have a royal family here, don't you? Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you like that? Do you like having a royal family? <laughs> Tricky question, Mr. Smith. <laughs> no, is that no? You know this button on Facebook? It's complicated. Really? That's it's complicated. Well, they are, aren't they? It's a complicated thing, any monarchy. But yeah, oh well, I won't go there. Yeah, I've, I've met the king once, and you get this training. You have to, you have to say sire all the time, sire. You have to address him with sire. So I was talking to the king all the time, saying yes, sire, no, sire, and wow. I was this close to saying. Hey, Siri, put my alarm clock on 6.30. And I didn't. Oh, Siri. Yeah, so I, I constrained myself. <laughs> so, uh, pink microphone, where is the pink microphone? Oh, Hello. There, yes. Hiya. Hi. Um, so, a huge fan of just the Crown Doctor, but question about House of, to, House of the Dragon. Mm. How hard was it in terms of learning High Valyrian or just the pronunciation? And if you could say anything to us in High Valyrian as well? In High Valyrian? Um, oh, God. Silencio. I could, if I got my phone, I could listen to it and say something, or I could read it. Um, it's quite hard to remember High Valerian. It's quite, it's quite a hard language to learn. Actually, I mean, you guys all speak loads of languages. I'm just an ignorant Brit who knows more. So you probably pick it up quicker than me. But it's like a mixture of sort of Latin and Arabic. Can I remember any off the top of my head? Um, De Milo, uh, no, I can't. If it comes to me, I'll say it out loud to you, but yeah. Thanks. No, but it was good, and I, I sort of had to learn it, yeah, like just practice and repeat, really. But what was interesting about it from an acting perspective was like, it, like you know when you go abroad with your friend, well, you don't know this, but if I come to sort of France or Belgium or whatever, and then suddenly my friends are like, bonjour, ça va? and you're like, wow, I didn't even speak French. It sort of reveals this whole other part and it revealed this whole other bit of Damon Targaryen to me, which I didn't know was there. It was softer, more playful. Nice and cheers, thanks. Thank you. Cheers. The blue microphone on this side. Yes, please. Hello. Hello. 
Um, I have another Doctor Who question. So we've seen the Eleventh Doctor meet different versions of himself, like with the Tenth Doctor. Uh, is there any uh, version of the Doctor that the Eleventh Doctor hasn't met yet, but you would like to? The, um, oh, you mean the other Doctors, you mean? Yeah. Um, I'd like to meet Chris Eccleston's Doctor, the Ninth. Um, I'd like to meet Peter's, you know. Um, I'm really excited about the new Doctor. Yes. Really excited. <laughs> Who's excited about the new Doctor? Yeah. I think he's going to be really, really good. He's a great actor. He's got a good spirit about him. And, um, yeah, I think, I think that could be really interesting. So, yeah, I mean, look, I'd love to meet them all because we're all one person, really. What, what makes a good Doctor, do you think? Wow, that's a very good question. I think you've got to be slightly mad to play the Doctor. Genuinely, I think you've got to have a genuine streak of madness in you. Yeah. Um, um, but I don't know. I mean, what makes a good Doctor? It's, it's a million things, isn't it? It's down to your taste. And it's who you see first, I think, often. It is. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, some people like Tom Baker is their favorite, you know? Yeah. Um, For me, it's, quir it's the quirkiness that... Um, really? Yeah. And the quirkiness was really there with you and David Tennant, and yeah. it's gonna come back with the new Doctor, I'm pretty sure. Of that. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I look forward to. That's yeah. What I'm no, I think he's gonna be great. Yeah. Good. Next question. The pink microphone. Over there. Hello. Hello, man. How are you Hi. doing? Hi. Very well, thank you. How are you? Just good, thanks. Uh, we're brothers, and if I ask a question and he doesn't, he's gonna kill me. And if he doesn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna... That's cool. So we got a question for each. Yeah. My question is that we're far from Doctor Who or uh, House of Dragons and stuff. My question is there has been you know, rumors about you playing in a DC you know, series or a movie like, in future years. Would you ever consider playing the Riddler in any of the DC movies or series? Yeah, but Paul Dano has just done it and he's so good. Um, so I think that, that ship sailed. But it's a great part. I'd, I'd, I'd have loved to have been involved. That's that's. He's probably. I think Batman's probably my favorite superhero. And if you ever had a chance to play with a like within a in, in a Batman movie as a Riddler, which Batman actor would you choose? Oh, that's a great question. Michael Keaton. Yeah. Um, right. I loved those Batmans so just because I grew up with those Batmans, and they were probably my favorites. And then look, I think I think the Nolan Batmans are amazing as well. But yeah, Michael Keaton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I want to ask about the Game of Thrones world. If the Daemon was like in the time of Game of Thrones, uh, what would be his relationship with Jon Snow, especially after he killed the last Targaryen? Well, I don't think Jon Snow would survive very long. <laughs> <laughs> I think the dragons would come out and Daemon would go hunting. I don't know, who knows? Be a, that would be a good face-off though, wouldn't it? Jon Snow and Daemon Targaryen. It'd be a good battle. Thank you. And huge loves from Azerbaijan. Thank you. Thanks, dude. Okay, we have time for one more question. Last question, where is the blue yes, microphone? Yes, one more. The blue microphone is over there. Yes, Here please. we go. Hi, it's an honor to meet you. It's an honor to meet you. It's an honor to meet a doctor. Yes. Uh, I'm forced to say this, but it's my sister's birthday, so. Happy she's birthday. Here. She's here. I forced her to watch Doctor Who. Yes. Yeah. But I wondered when watching Doctor Who, could the doctor be diagnosed with ADHD? <laughs> probably, yeah. yeah. I recognize a lot. Like, yeah, I mean, I probably can. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the doctor could be diagnosed with a lot of things. He's a pretty strange mad creature he's got a lot of alien afflictions i'm sure but um yeah why not why not thank you <laughs> if he has a heart disease he has a spare one so that's he no has problem. a spare one all the other... he can bounce around the two you see all the other stuff is problematic so thank you very much for being here man. Yeah. and thank you for thank you for having me, me. Well, 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 mr matt smith au revoir